Hello and welcome to Stephen University. This week we'll be discussing mindful education. Um, yeah, so Chris, just straight. Let's let's be focused for the first time ever. Let's take the lesson from this episode about focusing, um, and say, what was it about? Well done. Uh, so I was going to make a, I was going to deliberately tangent us, but I won't. Um, so in this episode, uh, Connie shows up and Stephen's like, I'm bald. Turns out he's not bald. It's a gag. Um, it's very it's, Stephen. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> stay, but Connie's a bit, uh, Connie's a bit cagey. Connie, something's up. Something's up with cons. Mm. Um, they, it becomes apparent it's fusion training. Uh, Garnet's there. She's obviously very excited. Loves a good fusion. She's got a little sign. Stephen mm-hmm. and Connie goes to Bonnie. Uh, they go to the training area. The pearl hologram things fuse. Stephen and Connie fuse. They realise they can flow. It's all good. Um, they go um, to attack uh, the fused pearl. Um, and then they separate because fused pearl turns into a boy. And they're like, what? They separate. Uh, turns out Connie beat the shit out of some lad. Um, she's feeling guilty about it. <laughs> Um, so not how, not how I would phrase it, but uh, sure. <laughs> Beat so, the shit out of someone. That's the most British you've sounded on this God. podcast. <laughs> and what's funny it. about that is that's not the stereotypical what American thinks of. Hello, I'm British. Would you like to try some pheasant? Uh, none of that. No, you are like legit, like uh, like sort of on the street. You know, young Brit. Which is, oh, I beat the shit out of him, mate. Like, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what you basically just did. That was amazing. Carry on. <laughs> my my dad once uh, argued with the chef at a restaurant because he ordered pheasant and swears to this day it was chicken. Uh, it's quite a British experience. <laughs> that is so... the most British you've ever been. And also, I think we are now both responsible for breaking the focus already, which is just less like... than a minute after saying we'll be focused. It's that's... Like... Mate, it's a tiny us. chicken. <laughs> literally adamant the chef's like it's the size of a pheasant he's like no it's a the chef was mock italian apparently he's like no it's a tiny chicken anyway uh <laughs> like he got the, he, he got the carcass mate unreal um so they garnet makes them close their eyes and they go into like this sort of focusy dreamscape she sings a song about um it being thoughtful being more focused which i'm sure mm-hmm. dan will quote later because he loves the song as butterflies mm-hmm. Um, and they, she decides that she knows it's, it's okay to feel that way. Um, then the next day Connie comes back and, uh, and afterwards Stephen sort of says, oh, I, you know, I know how it feels. Connie comes back. She's all chirpy. She's made it up with the kid. They've, they're taking selfies. She's giving him lessons. All good. This time Stephen feels a bit low. Um, they go into the, uh, they go into battle again and then they're about to hit the fusion pearl and suddenly Steven sees Bismuth. Um, suddenly he sees, um, Jasper, uh, Jasper and he sees red eyed Ruby who obviously mm-hmm. accidentally jetted off into space. Mm-hmm. Um, so he sees all the people he beat the shit out of and he's like, Oh God. Um, so then they end up falling and they're, <laughs> She's like, let's fuse so we can float. Well, you seem to be doing a good job of parachuting down and having a chat, but all right, animation, I'll let it go. Uh, no, um, no, let's not. No, 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 that's not fair. You, you, you'd see the videos where people skydive. They're falling for hours and hours. Like, they're not hours. They're falling for ages. Like minutes and minutes and minutes go by while they're just sort of going through the air. Yeah. You don't know how high up the sky um, arena is. Let's be fair. That's fair. Okay, that could be. Okay, it could be higher fair. up than planes or something. It takes. It takes. If you parachute out of a plane, it takes you a good couple of minutes to get to the ground. Yeah, but they haven't got parachutes. They're just. That's able why to they need to float. The conversation. They're floating. Yeah. They're they're going down. Yeah, we, but you've seen people parachute in tandem where they're next to each other, but they're going down at the same rate. Yeah, but you never see them having a chat. There's yeah, they do on the shit. microphones. They have little headsets so they can talk to each other like people on motorbikes do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which Stephen and Connie don't have in this scene. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, but okay, so the, the gushing of the wind would cause too much sound, but they, you could go yeah. down in, in, in tandem. Just, um, you know, the only the only bit that's cartoony is the lack of wind um, noise. Yeah. That's just, that's the only bit felt... that's cartoony. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. Not fa- they're, never, not falling, a... they're not falling slowly, which is what you suggested when you said, like, well, I don't know why she needs to float. They seem to be going pretty slow at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I, I do think they're sort of just having a casual chat. It's, it's, it took me out. Anyway, 
Um, so Stephen's saying his feelings about how he feels about everything. <coughs> Connie's like, oh, you've just got to, it's okay to feel this way. I, I've i learned that. I mean, you know, I, I appreciate the, the, <laughs> the dude got, I appreciate the dude got injured. I'm not entirely sure the situations are comparable, Connie, but okay. Um, what you've, you've, you've learned yesterday because you beat someone up. I mean, he poofed a gem anyway. Um, they fuse, they float, um, and Stephen realizes he has to deal with these feelings, all all centered around his actions recently. Mm-hmm. Episode ends. There you go. Mm. Um, I'm guessing you not go. that fond of this episode, Chris. From your, uh... I'm, I'm, I hate the way you... <laughs> it's like you're like I'm gonna try and guess from the tone. I try and make the ra- I try and make the wrap up sound quite mutual. Uh, I'm gonna try. Even you more so, failed. like the next episode. The next episode, the the roundup will just be like, "This happens. This happens. This happens." Cool, and then, and then you'll be like, "Oh, so you didn't like it?" I'm like, Damn it! This happens. This happens. This happens. You know what you need to do is like range of. You need assets. to do it. No, this is how you need to do it. Stephen came. Uh, look, Connie came round to Stephen's house. He was bald. They went to the place where they train. They fused. It didn't work. Connie discovered that she has some unresolved issues. They spoke to Garnet. Garnet sang a song. After the song, Connie resolved her issues. Stephen had some issues. They fell off the sky arena. Stephen resolved his issues. They floated home. I think it's too soon after the death of a great man for you to be doing funny voices like that. <clears throat> wow, that is not what um, I was doing. You are a bad person. <laughs> so for those listening, we are because rec- obviously we, there's, a, there's there's now an increasing gap because we're starting to get ahead again. But the, the even they were like, this. "Whoa, Dan." Too soon. Jesus. Don't do a <laughs> um, Stephen Hawking I was voice. just doing it in a monotone voice. Chris is referencing the, the loss of uh, the great Stephen Hawking, which uh, not which cool. Which is awful. But how fair play to him. Like, he had two years to live and he lived for 56 more. Like, what a legend. What a hero Stephen yeah. Hawking is. Um, he's, uh, the defi- he's, the definition, I... he's the definition of that old action stereotype of never tell me the odds. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. The, you've got you, no you, chance you, of surviving this situation. Never tell me the odds. Run straight into the situation. <laughs> That's how I imagine Stephen Hawking said it after the doctors told him. They were like, "Yeah, you won't live for more than two years. Don't tell me the odds." Zip, out of the door, gone to have to you, live on for have, many, many more years. Have you heard the time travelers' story? How awesome is that? He threw a party and invited time travelers after the party. Under the logic that they would travel back in time and and join the party, and apparently no one turned up. But how awesome is that? Like That's as a great. thing to do. That's so cool. So anyway, um, I'll be honest. I'm gonna upset everyone. I'm torn. I it's I don't know because, and I'm just I know I'm gonna annoy you and people listening because I've no doubt this is a fan favorite, and I really enjoyed it. I did really enjoy it, but I'm a little bit torn because it. <laughs> just kind of felt like this awesome music video and then we learn that steven learns that he's gonna have to deal with some stuff but that stuff doesn't get resolved and nor should it in this 11 minute episode but i it just it it just feels a little bit like this really cool music video and then uh oh steven's gonna deal with this at some point okay cool that's Mm. where i'd sit with it like um, I, I, I still really enjoyed the music <coughs> video. I still enjoyed the episode. Um, I just, yeah, it just didn't necessarily. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Well, um, yeah. Uh, gonna go ahead and one hundred percent disagree with all of that. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I thought you would. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think. Uh, I think it's one of those things where so Stephen as a character has always put on the brave face. He's the happy kid. He seems like he doesn't have a care in the world most of the time. Um, he's always trying to be joyful. and He's always trying to be happy. But you, you sometimes get the, these, these weird fleeting impressions that that is more for the benefit of those around him sometimes and that he does that regardless of how he feels because he wants to be strong for everyone else and he wants to be a positive force for everyone else. And what's so powerful about this episode, separate to my other thoughts about it, which I'll get to in a minute, which are more personal, but I think my my more objective opinions about why this is such a powerful episode, something that can relate to everyone, is that, yes, he puts on this brave face, but it turns out he's oh so consumed 
by these things he's had to do. And he's a child. Mm. He's a child that has had to essentially poof another gem. You know, he let eyeball float off into space. Jasper became a corrupted gem, essentially. And he wanted so desperately to help them. He is such... that Because that's not... He doesn't say, oh, I feel bad for me. He says, I, they just wouldn't let me help them. Mm. That is fucking heartbreaking. That is a child that want, it wants to do good and do right by every person and is tormented by his failures. He's a child. That pressure should not be anywhere near him. Yet it is. And he's so good at dealing with it. It's only this episode it really hits you how tortured, essentially, he is by all this. And what I love the way they do it is is, is it starts really focused on the simple and the easy, the Connie of it all, which, you know, when Connie comes to Stephen with his problems, what's genius about this is Stephen says, um, you've just got to try not to think about it. But if you listen and pay attention to what Garnet is saying in the song and then to what's Connie says later, which is, no, I had to do something. You know, worrying about it doesn't actually solve anything. Sometimes you just need to take action. Um, or, and, and, and ignoring it doesn't help either. But if you think back to what Steven says in the opening, that's actually a really clever hint at the fact that he's not dealing with his shit either. He's just not thinking about it. But mm-hmm. we all know that that's not how the mind works. You know, if you don't think about it, you're essentially just plugging the hole and it's, you know, the, the bath will continue to fill. Do you know what I mean? Um, mm. and, and that all swells and builds and, 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 and can create quite a pressure. Um, and what I think is really cool about the way this episode is designed, again, talking just about my overall objective opinion before I get to some more personal thoughts in a second, um, I think it's really clever the way that Connie's simple issue help set up the much deeper seeded issues and what's great about it is connie's is clearly something so simple and so small that a little lesson with garnet and she was able to work through that because she's not going through something like steven is steven's in a situation where he can't just go find you know bismuth and apologize really realistically he can't Mm. unbubble bismuth he can't find jasper and undo the damage done ruby is out lost in space what can he do about that I mean, they f- admittedly, the gems found him, so you'd think he'd be out there trying to find him. Anyway, the, the, that ruby, the, the eyeball that's gone. Anyway, different story. But there's very little Stephen can really realistically do about these situations. So he's tormented with them, and there's no way for him to get closure. Um, and an episode that explores that by surprise is genius, because it's just not about that until the moment it is. And they're even a little bit more subtle about Stephen not being in a great position when Connie comes around the next day and she's all cheery. Um, that the mm. Connie when when Steve when Connie comes around and Steven's all cheery and she's completely being miserable because she had this thing happen at school. It's so blatant. You're like, what's wrong with Connie? With Steven, you go, are they trying to hint maybe that Steven's not quite right here? Maybe. And then like it, it, when it gets confirmed like a, like thirty seconds later in the arena, it it hits so much harder because it is so out of left field, and and you just realize that he's is he's way more. He's got so much more going on than she has, and. He, he he's not going to be able to to solve these issues with 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 simple things. He's he's really got a lot of work to do personally, um, or or you know he's going to have some real issues going forward personally. You know, uh, and and I think yeah, I just think that's really powerful stuff. Um, and I think that the way that the story unfolds is just genius on every level because again, it starts so playful that when the Steven stuff hits you, that when it cuts to that shot of Bismuth. Like my heart just broke. Like when I first watched this, it was he's a child. This is a me- this is immense. Like this poor kid, because you just don't because Steven's such a happy character, you don't think about it. So it really slaps you around the face when you get to that moment, and that's why, dramatically speaking, it's one of the more powerful ones uh, and, a, and a favorite of mine. Uh, and that and you know, bitch and song in the middle as well, plus some cool action. So it's got a bit of everything really. Um, but yeah, that's my overall thoughts. Um, do I do you want me to hit but the more? They... Pro- Go on. But could they really hear each other if they were fooling? You know, no, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> I think you make some really valid points. Um, I think I think that's fair. That gives me a um, like. I, I think I, I I don't know. I saw all that, but maybe didn't hit me as hard. Or maybe there were some bits of it I I didn't quite see. Like I interpreted the the left field as like I say as um, it being a music video in the mi- middle, and then it goes somewhere else. But you're right. That left field may, that's you know clearly by design. And you mm-hmm. could look at it in a negative way, but you could also look at it in a in a positive way, and uh, and 
and uh, you know give the story credit for that reason. Um, I think that's all all very fair. Um, so yeah, no, I think that's. I think you, I can completely see um, see where you're coming from. Um, I've got a theory, but let's hear your uh, your personal your the way it hits you personally. Uh, yeah, so um, I um, have, and and this is this is this is quite personal stuff. So you know whether this is worth listeners hearing or not, I don't know, but you know, gonna say it because it's part of my opinion deep. of this episode and it affected my viewing of the episode first time and this time. Mm. Um, I uh, personally have suffered with like anxiety, um, uh, and you know, and, and if you've ever had legitimate anxiety, you you know you you understand the way that thoughts can swirl and expand and you can think you know you probably understand about the hours and hours you'll spend in bed sort of running over every choice and word you uttered the day as it went on uh, and unable to get closure on stupid little things that are completely insignificant but your brain won't just will not stop replaying them it can lead to insomnia it can lead to it can lead to physical p- symptoms pains uh, like in your stomach, chest, headaches, my attention headaches. Um, it's 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 genuinely uh, a, a deeply unpleasant experience on all fronts. And uh, mindfulness as techniques for dealing with uh, anxiety um, and somewhat to do deal with dealing with depression as well is a legitimate and very commonly used technique. Um, if you've ever, if anyone has ever been uh, in that situation, and, and, I, and I, I I hope to God. Uh, God, that I don't technically believe in, but <laughs> use the phrase. Um, I, I hope that that is a very small number of our listenership, if any. Um, I know that's probably not realistic, and I know there's probably a lot of you out there that have suffered with it. But let's let's just hope that 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 it is a small number because I'd like to think that better. But um, mindfulness is actually, I think, I've learned a really really useful tool for dealing with. Mm. Uh, when th- when your brain kicks into that mode of just swirling pointless thoughts around your head that just uh, like uh, yeah it's it's hard even to explain it really but the, the the techniques of mindfulness which you you know there are courses you go on the NHS in England will actually send you on mindfulness courses and things now mm. if you deal with these issues and um i think they're really valuable and i think having an episode of a kids television show that came up Shortly after I experienced it and looked into um, some of that stuff, um, plus, uh, you know, just thinking it's so it hit me particularly because I really related to the subject matter, and particularly the song has a real relevance to me um, mm. and always hits really hard when I watch it. But then on top of that, I think even in a situation where I haven't experienced mindful, uh, you know, a need for mindfulness, I think it's really, really important that we give kids these tools. So to, yeah, to that, the, the, the premise of that song of sit, take a moment, collect yourself. It's just a thought. It's gonna. It, it, it's 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 you've 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 uh, actualized a concern in your head, and you've and you've made it ten times worse and more of an issue than it probably is. You need to think and calm down, gather yourself move on um and i think uh, and i'm butchering the teachings of mindfulness here i'm aware of that but the getting that message into a song in a kid's show is so absurdly valuable and i just thought maybe if That's i'd fair. had this as a kid maybe i'd be more prepared or had be more prepared for some of the you know some of the experiences i would have as an adult um and i so, think the, the G- go on. sorry go on no no there no, you go no, no, I, 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 I uh, have yeah, well, nothing. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I don't want to interrupt you if you did have something, but it felt like you were, you know, you were um, talking. No, well, about if, I, if I had space. something, I forgot it. So um, if you carry on, it's fine. <laughs> um, I think that's the cleverness of the, and it's relevant to what you were saying, I think that's the cleverness of um, thinking about it, the, the Connie storyline. They could have had Connie do something gem-related, They could, which in some ways she did because she was clearly using her <coughs> training. They could have had her fuck up in a battle. They could have had mm. all sorts of of gem stuff. But what they what they did instead was have Connie mm. have an incident at school. So they instead of they made it incredibly relatable. She she lashed out at someone over something at school. They you know they showed they showed that moment. They they framed it in a 
in a very human way. Um, they framed mm -hmm. the incident that causes that message is an incident that a child watching could have. Um, and that's, um, that's a great message to, uh, to send. And I think, I think th it's the kind of thing that I think shows don't show enough. I think that, you mm -hmm. know, because kids shows are, and even this show is, so uh fantasy based it you mm. could easily have it where like it, i was thinking about this yesterday this is this is such a weird pull um but yesterday i watched the the much criticized and much um negatively reviewed uh yoga hoses by kevin smith mm -hmm. and i will i will say this for it what i thought was clever is I'm watching these these this set about it's set um in a convenience store with two teenage girls who end up fighting this and it's it's fancy in a way because of the monster they they end up fighting, but they are two normal teenage girls. They I mean, I was watching it and they're pulling yoga poses and then they start kind of doing yoga moves to fight this villain and I was like, well, fair play because. It's great having Wonder Woman. I'm not dismissing at all the power of Wonder Woman. I think Wonder Woman did brilliant things for for young girls. But that is it. and Princess Leia was great and all these amazing female role models. But mm -hmm. Ray <laughs> the in the thing... recent Star Wars movies. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A mm -hmm. Amazing stuff. But there's an element of that's so science fiction. Do you know what I mean? Wonder Woman is is a, is a is a woman, but it, she is also a god. So. To see normality, I think, is even... God, it's such a shame that it's rare enough to see Wonder Woman. It's even rarer to see, a, you know, a female role model that doesn't have those powers. And I'm not... You know what I mean? I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm saying there's room for both. How awesome is it here that it wasn't her doing some gem stuff where the person watching it is... The kid watching it is going, well, I'm never going to... I'm never going to be fighting a gem monster. It's her having a row at school, which they would have all the time. It's a relatable, obtainable thing. The, the same with yoga hoses. The, they didn't have powers. They they were just kind of yeah, kicking I'm, ass. Uh, you yeah, know, so it's, it's like the idea of something at school weighing on you as you go home because you've you've done something yeah, embarrassing. They made that's, it so that's relatable. That's what they do because they have her specifically say it was it was really embarrassing like which is like so it's she knew the guy mm. was okay physically um but she was mostly just humiliated and and that she that she'd resorted to that like so quickly and like you know and i yeah yeah uh, yeah yeah 100% really relatable mm. yeah 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 and it's, it's, it's a weird experience because i and I, again i didn't say i didn't like it i said i'm torn and i think this conversation is definitely making me less torn and and lean towards the you know the the genius of it, because um, I like you say the song, the use of the butterflies and stuff. Really um, cool. I, my theory, my oh, theory. Yeah, okay, yeah, so, uh, well, wrote... one, one, before you get to the theory, actually, one thing I just wanted to say is that the the yeah. the, the, the very per to sum up very quickly. I, I think that's what I was going to say before we we got sidetracked a little bit. To sum up, basically, what I was rambling in towards there was. For me, the biggest impact of this episode as someone who'd experienced it and seen the benefits of mindful, uh, you know, mindfulness and, and, and things like that was the idea that even if one child could not go through some of the things I've gone through because Rebecca Sugar was caring enough and thoughtful enough and clever enough to work it, not ham-fistedly, but very subtly, in a way that somebody could watch this episode not knowing about these techniques and the anxieties that can come with them in the real world applications of these techniques and not know even know what it's related to. It's so subtle. The fact that Rebecca Sugar took the time to include this in a television show um, and potentially help these children who will one day be, you know, adults dealing with these issues and even maybe as children dealing with these issues. Uh, not mm, something I experienced. I was, I was lucky, I suppose. It's not something that really came up for me until later in life. But the idea that she... Um, has, has, has included that is personally for me to see that meant a lot because I just thought even if one kid is now more prepared then that's really incredible do you know what I mean and mm. it's probably not going to be one kid it's probably and, going to be lots of kids you know so that's really and, cool and it's going to sound stupid but also the other element of that is like you say framed in a framed in a song because 
naturally lyrics and songs <coughs> something with a rhythm mm -hmm. it's easier to seep in and stay in your mind mm -hmm. than than a line of dialogue in a show so if you do this episode without the song without the music video as i as i perhaps unfairly deemed it you know 20 minutes ago if you do it without the song maybe that message doesn't hang around for a kid because they're not humming it mm -hmm. they're not saying those words to themselves over and over again yeah yeah, 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 absolutely. And when you look, if you read like a pamphlet about mindfulness as a technique and then listen to that song again, the phrasings and the little words used here and there that seem innocuous are so directly taken from that sort of way of approaching um, anxiety and things like that. So it's it's really, mm. really incredible what they've done there. And that's why, what that's one of the reasons why, they, and, I, and I totally acknowledge that a chunk and a percentage of my love for this episode is is related to that um so i i'm 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 not going to yeah, describe fair, myself though. as a yeah absolutely but i'm not going to describe myself as the the most impartial judge of this episode as a piece of just entertainment but um yeah i that's it's really it, it as a result it's it's certainly one of my favorite songs and certainly one of my favorite episodes for that reason um but you had a theory let's get to the theory well it, well it's not really a big theory because it's stuff it's something i've said before but i i think you perhaps were meant to think that maybe Rose is there at the end because of like what he's talked about living up to her and um, insecurities related to that um, and anxiety related to that. I don't feel that's true. I think Rose is there because he's feeling her guilt. Um, he's feeling guilt for her and the things that, the you know, mm. the Rose is a bit dodge. Um, that's, <laughs> I think that's the what... Rose is a bit dodge theory is become your sort of like like it's 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 your aha if you you know an alan partridge or your like garlic bread if you appear okay these are all very british references it's your catchphrase for for, for this sort of chunk of these episodes the amount of times you've yeah, said that's... rose is a bit dodge that's what i'm labeling the theory it's my rose is a bit dodge theory and the theory is that steven is beginning to feel the weight of what she did and he will go on to find some way to address that. <coughs> Which is... Sorry, in... excuse my cough, guys. You'll have to, but what's interesting about that, though, is that it's been done quite subtly because, by essentially, by, by starting to hint that he's feeling the guilt of her actions, it means he's starting to believe that not all of her actions were good. Because previously, like, if you stick this episode... Uh, obviously you have to make sure that you've set up the bismuth and the ru the ruby element of it um, but if you put this episode and the jasper element of it um, you know earlier in the run before the suggestions and the hints that Rose was potentially you know a sort of war criminal of her own um, and that she did bad things or before Steven started to clock that you would go like you wouldn't think of it in any, in any other context you would just be like yeah he's, he's, he's feeling guilt because he's not living up to her but the more he starts to question her actions, the more you start to realize that he's taking on that guilt. And and but it's not explicitly said. You could take what you saw completely differently in this episode. It's very subtle, but it is present. Mm, I think so. Um, and I, like I say, I think the my theory is this season deals with him trying to deal with that guilt and that belief that what she did wasn't necessarily right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my I my did. rose is a bit dodge theory. The rose is a bit dodge theory. So yeah, it's going to be even bolder and say that I that's what takes him out because you said that I think I believe you said out of this world was a good summary for the whole season. Mm hmm. And you said that I think that's what takes him out of this. I think that's what takes us off of Earth. His his guilt. That's so you my, you you think that's, that's li theory. you think that's literally out of this world as in going to another planet. Yeah, I don't think you were like it's great, man. It's a great season. Like it's out of this world. Like I think that was a literal like okay. a fair bit of it set in space, <laughs> okay, or or on Homeworld or wherever. Okay, I, I'm not saying anything, obviously. No, um, no, no. So uh, in, in terms of just a few of the bits of the episode that are worth mentioning, um, love, love the use of Stevani in this episode to help illustrate the point. I think Stevani, uh, this version of Stevani, when it's Connie in her like training outfit, that, that purple sort of um, fighting costume she wears when she does this, um, 
love it. Like like the combination of how Stevani looks when it's Steven's shirt, but Connie's like sort of fighting top over it. I think it's a great look for Stevani. I like that um, Stevani is so easy to sort of for them to 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 create out, even if they had some trouble keeping it stable. I like My- the idea that we got a clearer insight into what sort of goes on when a when a when a fusion splits you know through instability rather than through um dis- choice because we yeah because I, what i like about that is this is the first time steven has experienced that i think no it's not is it because didn't that happen no you no that's a lie um steven experienced it during the very first time that became stevani when when kevin was all a creeper yeah, but that's that's what I love about that's my favorite use of Stevani in this episode. The the plot of you need to be thinking the same way, you need to be in line with each other to fuse and make a fusion work has been done a few times. Yet that was the plot of this, but it didn't feel at all like retreading old ground because of the way it was framed, yeah. the way it was done. But yeah, but well, um, because it, it sort of showed it from a more internal perspective. We've we've seen them defuse in the past and gone, oh, they were not on the same page. But sort of seeing the, of, uh, like a visual manifestation of how that was. Do you know what I mean? Like the colors mm, changing, yeah. seeing the visuals of the things that are making them split, hearing that internal monologue as they try to fight it. You know, really interesting because you've got to imagine all that's happening in like a split second before they defuse. Um, yeah, and you've got yeah. to imagine that that's sort of in in some way, or there's some version of that has gone on every single time we've seen one of those sort of stability diffusions, um, and and then that's really cool to get more insight on that. Um, liked seeing the Hollow Pearl again. Obviously, always love seeing the Sky Arena, and obviously, I really love that of all the people to sort of teach about mindfulness at Garnet. Just so perfect. Oh, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. Really well done. I'm trying to think if there's any other elements of just the detail of the episode that I want to talk about before we uh, we get to just the admin bits, the triv, as you call it, Chris. Yeah, we got any triv? I think it's beautifully animated. Yeah, it's great. Really well done, and particularly as you said, and again, I've mentioned it, but the symbolism of the of the butterfly is really cool, um, and also the use of ruby and sapphire to demonstrate what Garnet's talking about during that video, as you called it, the music video as you called it, um, is really cool as well. I love the uh, the shot of the butterfly on the sword, like that hit. Yes, that's Eagle really clever. Fine. Yeah, you're really right. That's like really that. clever because that really suggests what he's. That really is. Imp- there's implications about what he's worried about by connecting yeah, those yeah. two. Image that imagery is is really great. Yeah, no, you're absolutely yeah. right. That's really clever. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, me too. Me too. And that's. I mean, that is the sword, isn't it? That's isn't. Oh no! What, how did Stephen? It was the sword, wasn't it? Stephen used. Yeah, it was. Yeah, the the butterfly lands on the sword because I think. Oh no, no, I'm talking before. about bismuth. Sorry for a second. It was it's bismuth. The sword was used for bismuth. I know the sword was roses, so there's connections there. But it's also the very. I'm pretty sure the sword was the weapon used to poof bismuth too. Yes. Yeah. 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 I just. Uh, yeah. I, I was thinking more just that visual with the butterfly landing on the sword. I thought was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Uh, uh, especially because of what it symbolised. I think for Stephen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's some cool trip. Obviously, the first time we've seen the inside of Connie's school, um, so we know it's like it's quite a traditional school. We haven't ever seen a school in this universe, so we didn't. I suppose you could. They could be different, yeah. um, but no, it's pretty. It looks pretty traditional. Um, hollow pearls fused to make a giant hollow pearl is a new thing, but it weirdly matches the logic of when the, the you know the when rubies fuse, they make a giant ruby. So you've got to assume when gems of the exact same type fuse, that is just a consistent rule of thumb unless for some yeah, reason they look different assumption. yeah because in the past we've seen uh yellow diamonds pearl and yellow diamonds pearl looks different to our pearl so you've got to imagine if the our pearl and yellow diamonds pearl fused they'd look, it a bit look, different different. They'd look yeah it wouldn't yeah. look like a just giant normal version of our pearl it'd be some sort of mix of the two color wise um obviously the butterflies are used a lot in this apparently in many cultures the butterfly represents the soul the colour white representing the purity okay. of soul. Um, and it has a lot of associations with good luck and moving on the right path in life. Um, it also could be a reference to the expression butterflies in the stomach, which can relate to anxiety. Um, so yeah, the, cool. butterf- the butterflies shown are also quite similar to the ones that attacked Stephen in Serious Stephen. Don't recall that. I remember the episode. Don't recall butterflies being involved, but there you go. No, I think the um, the butterflies is a uh, also a reference... Um, to the butterfly effect. Um, yeah, the, the, the writers with... of the show really love Ashton Kutcher. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you think it's a reference, probably is. Probably is. We'll come to that in a minute, actually. Hey, hey if, but, if Butterfly one, Effect was sure. an anime, people would be saying it was a reference, so... Yeah. True. Um, this this episode featured some sequences made by a Japanese animator as a guest ep- animator called Takafumi Hori, who I've looked at his uh, you know credits and I didn't recognise anything immediately. Um, to be honest, with you, it's a lot of anime basically, uh, but not any ones that uh, not off the top of my head. There's a lot listed here though; it's a huge list. This guy's worked on a ton of stuff, so um, it's the first time the show has had a guest animator. Um, that's cool but he came on board and did some I guess, I'm going to assume some of the dream sequence stuff it doesn't specify here but I'm guessing some yeah, of the, the, that, the video that bits felt, yeah that felt the most different so I would, yeah. I would share that assumption yeah um, first song obviously sung with Stevoni as a, as a as a duet like first time Stevoni, Stevoni has sung um, obviously should, a really cool thing here actually which I liked I'm pretty sure Connie is left-handed and has been shown to be left-handed. If I'm wrong, then Stephen has. So it turns out Stevoni is ambidextrous. <laughs> That's cool. Because one is left-handed, one is right-handed, and Stevoni can yeah. do both. So apparently in That's this episode, nice they're seen using the, sh- short, the sword and shield interchangeably. Because obviously That's you would cool. normally put the sword in your strong hand um, yeah. for a bit of extra. Um, in the ancient Sky Arena, there are four floating... Um, sort of diamond shaped sort of rock things um, they can be seen above the arena the pink one is uh, is broken possibly sort of not foreshadowing but sort of like a um, little nod at the idea that maybe pink diamond was shattered um, mm-hmm. thought that was kind of cool That's nice. um, this is episode yeah. ends is one of the few that ends without an iris close you know the onto like a specific yeah. thing uh, which is pretty cool uh, Stephen and Connie holding their hands together as they fall is a, uh, it says here possible reference, but it's, I'm sorry, it's a reference to the 2001 Japanese anime fantasy film Spirited Away, which, uh, yeah, I think so. I thought that when I saw it the first time, it's a film, the Studio Ghibli yeah, film. Nice. Yeah. Have you seen have you seen that one? Fair play. Uh, no, animation. Hate it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's it's a really good, it's, it's a good one. It's not my favorite Studio Ghibli film, but I get why it's sort of, it's the most, it's the most accessible. The reference point. Yeah. Well, it's well, it's the most accessible to a Western audience, so I know why Spirited Away is like the one everyone goes to when they talk about Studio Ghibli films. Studio Ghibli, for those who don't know, which I can't imagine any of our listeners, other than maybe Chris, <laughs> uh, would not know this, but Studio Ghibli is basically the Disney of, of Japan. Uh, like in, the, the, in, my def- in my defense, I don't listen to this, so I'm joking. That's true, true. Uh, so yeah, Spirit Away is their sort of like big, sort of the one that's done mo- probably the best overseas, but that my favorite Studio Ghibli film, Chris, is The Cat Returns. I think you referenced that recently. I might have done. It's really I good. Might be wrong. It's really might good. Be wrong. It's really good. Um, cool. Although Princess Mononoke also very good. Anyway, um, what am I doing? Um, not as fond of my neighbor Totoro. Sorry, guys. I think it's just fine. Which isn't anyway. Um, Stevoni kicking their legs to hover in the air is a possible reference, and again, I'm going to say probably is because I recognise this as well, to uh, Yoshi and Luigi's scuttle jump animation from Super Mario Bros. So when you jump with Yoshi or Luigi, Uh, their legs sort of flail about a bit. Um, I think that's definitely a reference. And what's cool about that is uh, playing the Save the Light game, Peridot has that exact jump. Which I think is pretty cool. So they've obviously kept that in mind for the the game too. Uh, Garnet's method, method of mindfulness meditation... Um, closely resembles principles and strategies of the of the mindfulness cognitive behavior therapy um, or acceptance and commitment therapy practiced uh, by accepting the presence of negative feelings without dwelling on those thoughts. Both therapies have been shown to have a high success rate in treating anxiety, depression, and PTSD. So obviously that is the uh, the trivia of the of the on the website sort of confirming what I was saying earlier, which it has real life um, uh, sort of yeah, connotations. Which is, is- it's really changed my view, I think, on the episode. Like I say, at the beginning, I was torn. I'm, uh, I'm definitely less torn about it now. I can, uh, I can good. certainly see its, uh, its value and its power a lot more. Mm. That's good. Yeah. Um, weirdly, cool. now this one, I don't know if this is a reference, right? But I know the usual rule is if it's, if it might be, it is. But I think this is the exception. Can we make an exception to that? Because I think this is a bit of a stretch. There's a gentleman called Stephen Hayes, and he's a PhD. 
and he's known for his work relating to acceptance and commitment therapy, which is obviously related to mindfulness. He's bald, and they think the ba- Stephen's bald appearance during the opening joke might be a reference to him because he's a bald Stephen, Stephen Hayes. Oh, I don't know if that's one or if that's just drawing a line where there might not be a I line to I've be drawn. Heard, I think there's been... I think there's been worse, though, to be honest. I can't pull any out of a hat now, but I I think there's been less like, oh, that makes sense than that, I'll be honest. Yeah, probably, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it could be, but it's that one seems a little bit... Un- yeah, anyway. Yeah, I see why you say that, but yeah. Yeah. Um. So, now, there's a bunch of... St- do you, do, have you... Okay. So, there's this other thing relating to uh, chakras or chakras, ch- chakras, um, which is a concept... Uh, relating to energy and thoughts flowing sort of through, I'm probably going to butcher this. So I'm not going to explain it in too much detail because I'm going to embarrass myself. I'm sure it's a concept I'm only vaguely aware of. Um, but the idea is you have several chakras in your body, and they're at very specific points, and they deal with different things. And if one becomes blocked, it can cause issues for you. It's actually a concept that was looked at in um, Avatar: The Last Airbender. When there's a point when he couldn't, when when Ang couldn't do certain things, and he he found this sort of um, sort of wise old man who, who said he had blocked chakras and and tried to help him unblock them, and it was to do with his anxieties and 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 worries as well. Um, so I'm I'm going to read to you from the trivia page very quickly the stuff about that that's related to this episode because and, and the reason I'm going to be so direct about it is because it's not something I fully understand, so I I don't want to butcher it. Is that does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. So the hand symbol made by Stephen and Garnet during the song, you know, when they're sat peacefully, mm-hmm. is called the Mudra, and it's for the Vish- Vishuddha chakra, or the throat chakra. This fifth chakra is the blue one, and it's the one of truth and communication, and it gets blocked by lies and confusion in the world of chakras. <laughs> Um, the scene of Stevani facing Stephen's thoughts are filtered through the through, through orange and yellow, which is symbolizing Stephen's uh, sac- sacral chakra, which is the orange chakra, and it's to do with uh, pleasure and creativity, and the solar plexus chakra, which is the yellow one, which is to do with willpower and taking action. These are likely blocked by guilt and shame, respectively. Um, Avatar: The Last Airbender did a similar thing. That's actually in here. I didn't realize that was referenced in here too. So I'm not okay. So I'm not the only one who noticed that link. Um, they did a similar thing with those exact same chakras. So there you go. For those yeah, of you cool. who are interested in the uh, in that sort of um, that particular way of looking at how how the body uses energy and stuff and the way it flows. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, nice. The negative depiction of butterflies is similar to that of an akuma. Um, from the French cartoon Miraculous Ladybug. That's interesting. Um, I haven't seen that, but there you go. Cool. And then uh, cool. a couple of very tiny little ones, which is just, uh, well, the, the ancient Sky Arena still shows all the damage that it received in Stephen versus Amethyst, <laughs> which I thought was really good. Yeah, um, that's a nice touch. Garnet takes Stephen's line from the message when she says, hold the phone, now give the phone to me. <laughs> That's a, a joke Stephen cheesily used at a previous episode, and she used it here, which I thought was adorable. Um, uh, and then the last one here is just... Yeah, it's just the, the one we already knew, which is that the vision Stevani sees when under stress in Alone Together and Beach City Drift are revealed to be a normal side effect when fusion is in disharmony. So there you go. Cool. There's a lot of uh, animation references. Feels like more than more than most, but I suppose when it's dealing with such a um, such a big <coughs> theme, maybe that lends itself to to more more references. And stuff. Well, also keep in mind that we had a guest animator as well, so it may be that the guest animator included. Ah, stuff. yeah, it's possible. That's fair. Or maybe I just read That's more fair. of them than usual. <laughs> I don't fair. think I did. Cool. I think I think I read what I normally read. But yeah, that's all really interesting. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, 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 good stuff. Good triv. Yeah, I thought so. Some good triv this week. I liked it. Um, yeah. The chakra stuff is really confusing and long, but I felt like I had to t- touch on it because it, it's clearly, there's a huge element of this episode relating to that, and it relates to Avatar The Last Airbender, and I felt like I can't ignore that trivia and not talk about it. 
Um, no, 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 that's fair. I mean, it's one of those things though, that I genuinely have to just acknowledge. I don't fully understand the concept. I don't 100% know where it originates from. I know it is a real world concept that has been adapted sort of in these shows, but I genuinely don't fully understand the, uh, the where it comes from, um, who it's used by, and also uh, 100% how it works. But, you know, that's fine. Yeah, and I, th- I thought what was read was interesting though, so it's all yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so cool. yeah, it's 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 a huge theory. There are literally books and books and books written on that concept. So um, I, I suppose it makes sense that yeah, it's all a bit vague and and strange and wishy washy in my head because I just I don't have enough facts to make it sort of more tangential and sort of really yeah. get my head round it. But um, maybe one day I'll read into it, Chris, and I'll understand all about chakras and I'll be able to unblock my chakras. You can... Yeah, you can give us an update on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, I'll let you know. I, you know, what, I tell you, what, I'll do. It. I will read into chakras and come back to you in a, in a couple episodes. How's that? Yeah, cool. Sounds there good. You go. There you go. Sweet. Uh, so that is. I think I'm that's everything. You give me a hint. Yeah, what? I want a hint. See, I'm going to say no now because you've asked for a hint. Go on, give me a little hint. No, you do. Okay, this is, it's the hundred eighth episode overall. Oh, big episode, big episode one hundred eight. Let's do it, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, that's as much as you're getting because you asked. We had this conversation, Chris. Okay. I'm taking it seriously. I know, because here's the thing now, Chris. That's if, I'd, I if, I'd, if I'd have given in then and given you a thing, you'd, you know, give them an inch, take a mile. I've got to assert myself. I made a rule, and if I break it first time out the gate, what am I? What are my rules? They're worth nothing, mate. You're gonna break it. You're gonna break it at some point. I'm gonna let you think I've forgotten I, I manage about a whole, it. I man, look, I manage a whole team of people at my work, and you give them an inch, they take a mile. That's how it goes. Sometimes you got to lay down the law. Sometimes, sometimes you got to put your foot down, Chris, and you got to stick to your guns. It's a weird. I don't think you could have made the point with the analogy. You didn't need to whip out your big, I manage a team of people, Dick, but whatever. Um, well, the, no. I, I, gonna... it's, it's, I would say that is relevant to what we're saying because, you know, I, I, I find that's what happens at my workplace. If I, if I lay down a rule and it's immediately broken, then that rule will never, ever be valid no matter what I do. No one will ever take that's it seriously. Fair. I, I'm just saying, I'm going to let you think I've forgotten, could happen in five episodes, <coughs> could happen in 30 episodes time, and I'm just going to be like, oh, can I have a hint? You'll be like, oh yeah, sure, Chris, here's a hint. I'll be like, boom. Yep. Uh, boom. You Good luck with that. Good luck with that. We shall see. We shall see. see. We shall cool. see. Um, yeah, so uh, that's everything for this week. Um, I've been Dan Doolan. I've been Chris Billigan. And we'll speak to you next time as we discuss Future Boy Zoltron.